Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I was do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today on the Working Draft server, I'm going to fix some of my Thaumium problems, or my Thaumcraft problems. Specifically, I was running out of Enderpearls, but luckily I've got good fans like you guys to let me know that I can take advantage of materials in the game that I have now to create Enderpearls from scratch. The secret to this is something known as a Minium stone. Now, a minium stone, I need to use all these extra shards of minium that I just got sitting around and put an inert stone in the middle. Now, that inert stone is pretty expensive. As you can see, it's four iron and one gold. Luckily for me, I happen to have all of those materials prepared. Who would believe it? What an unfortunate coincidence. Oh, wait, it's fortunate for you because I'm actually ready to make this episode. Isn't that nice? Okay, cool. Inert stone. And we will just put these nice little shards of minium all around it. And that seems pretty cool, but you guys are probably wondering, wait, how do I get the ender pearl out of that? It's round. It has, you know, common topology with the ender pearl. If you look, I can put an ender stone, or sorry, a minium stone in with four iron ingots, kind of like a little uh, cradle or something, or a tetris block, and I get one ender pearl. So let's go ahead and give that a go. And I get the impression that that's supposed to not consume the entire minium stone. Good, it does not. So now, I can essentially split this up. That was the wrong way to do that. And get 15 ender stones. Or ender pearls. Awesome. Now, in order to make the same stuff in Thaumcraft that I start really needing the ender pearls for, like the portable hole and this boar thing, I need an infusion altar. Um, oh wait, I have that. What I need is I need a totem. Wait, is this not the thing with the totems? I really thought the arcane board needed the totems. Oh, that's the basic aura manipulation thing. Well, too bad. I found some of them totems. Let's go attack them with a pick and take them. If they are still here. This is kind of a dangerous world. Why well, I'm on fire. Apparently people spontaneously catch fire here. So we've got this aura node thing, which is deadly. I already emptied this out, but I think I just need to take these, pick these totem things up with a normal pick, or a really good one. This is a particularly good Thalmcraft pick. These totems cannot be crafted in-game as of yet. You have to recover them. Okay, so this is a, 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 Tha a miscraft world where you randomly catch fire, which is an unpleasant experience if I had to tell you what kind of experience I was having. So, wait a second, though. Oh, hello, a random other guy. Let us try this a different way. I do not like being on fire this much. This oftenness on the fire is, is bad. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna make it out of here alive, though. Boom. Okay, so we just traded all of... So that's the faster way to get these obsidian totems. Weird, they seem to have different statuses. Let's leave, though, because this place is super dangerous, and I would not like dying. Now, I wonder what the difference is between the ones I've picked up and these other ones that I used the wand on. Let's find a nice little observation area. Well, that one... Oh, did I break the faces on the ones I picked up? Where's these? Nope, they're equally creepy and weird. No real issues to resolve there. Okay, well, we've got our totems, we've got, uh, we're ready for a good night's sleep. Hey look, there's a new version of Portal Gun available. Thanks, text-based interactions from the computer. We are going to teleport away to our Thalmcraft world. Oh, hey, these have Alienus in them if I use the pick on them, but they don't if I got them the other way. Well, that's really weird. So let's go ahead and store these for later and quickly assemble one of those wonderful portable holes so we can start making the cool stuff, right? Sounds good to me. Now, if I recall, the portable hole was just enchanted fabric on any side of an ender pearl here. Now it needs 16 permutatio, 24 vacuoso, and... Ooh, wait, what is this? Cloak of Distortion. Dude... That's pretty cool. It uses ender, char ender pearls for its charge. How do I make that? What mod is that? I have ender 
Blue wool. Huh. Invisibility sneak to teleport. That's a pretty cool mod, whatever mod that is. I will have to go look at that later. So, I'm going to quickly uh, fill a bucket with water so I can get these crucibles going. Because that would be a smart thing since my poor little guy got all evaporated and golemed away. Oh, golem, you will be missed. But luckily, now that he is uh, evolved to another plane, we will have other options to have fun with him as Graveler. Oh, wait, no, that's de-evolved. Nope, we will just never see him again too bad forever. Bye. Okay, cool, where were we? Permutatio. We can get that from the seeds that are just hanging out over here in none of these chests. Really? Okay, well, we can at least get the vacuousness, so we need 24 of those. Boom. Uh, let's go ahead and use an extra file to grab some of this extra stuff out of there. And good. We are not going to need that for right now, but it's nice to have. Okay. Permutatio also comes in eggs, which I don't have over here. So let's quickly teleport somewhere else that we might have left a bunch of eggs or seeds or panicked because, oh my goodness, how did we get to a point where we don't have those things? Oh no, did my book not follow me back from the crystal place? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Oh no, it's just on the floor here. Cool. Okay, next problem. The next problem is the mystery of the missing seeds. Dang it, seeds. You are... Oh, there we are. Yeah, I have them now. Okay, and then we're going to need Alienis, which we can get from six of those enderpearls. So that should cover us for our entire little jump here. So we are going to throw 16 of these in. Dang it, some of them didn't go in. Okay, four of them didn't go in. Now we also need, once again, 24 alienis. So that is six ender pearls. And we are all set. Now I can pick up this portable hole as soon as I make room in my inventory. Goodbye, extra stuff that I'm not using immediately. Farewell to the... I uh, will miss you. Not really. Okay. So let's grab this super awesome portable hole, which, as you guys know, I can use to make holes in things that I want to go through. Like, for example, if I was like, oh, I don't want to walk through this building. Oh, well, that building's actually resistant because it's made of warded stone. But if I wanted to go through this floor, boom, portable hole. Now, that's temporary. That'll go away on its own. And that uses a ton of V's to do that. So I probably should not just, you know, hang out making those all the time. That's generally a bad idea. But the real reason I wanted the portable hole was so that I could make this next thing in the little Thawmcraft happen and happens, which, oh no, we will need water yet again, because that is important in all Thawmcraft-related activities. Water, much like in life, is, eh, is required to keep your cauldrons from dehydrating. So, boom. Anti-dehydration mechanisms are in place. We are now going to grab this extra magic stuff, because that might be a handy thing to have later. And we'll stick that in there. Why is all of this worthless? Hey, extra bows, you're terrible. I'm going to combine you into one bow, and then maybe throw you on the ground, because, yeah, you've done nothing to earn my respect. Okay, so the next thing that we want to make, we're going to need our Thalmanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanomanom
I'm gonna be more pissed off the longer that this takes. Oh, come on. All right, there's our piston, and now we just need 32 Potentia, 24 Vacuous, 32 Machina, 64 Metallum, and 16 Modus. And with the casting of this final boat, we are now beginning to be able to produce an Arcane Boar, which apparently you can cook for 750 EU. Don't do that. That's a incredible waste. Great, so now that we got our arcane bore, which is the uh, top part of the excavation wand thing here, now we need, okay, so it requires three things to function. Wand of excavation in its leftmost inventory slot. Uh, it needs a pickaxe in its rightmost slot, and then we need V's to operate. Oh, it doesn't need a Boar base? Oh, yeah, it can only be placed on a boar base. Also, yeah, you should know that. Any item's mind will be ejected from the base in the direction the nozzle is pouring. It will eject into an inventory if possible. Direction can be changed with a wand. So let's get on that. It seems in a fit of just completely irregular generosity... Oh no, that one's free. I was going to talk about how the thing didn't require me to use any special... Okay, let's kill that guy. Boom. Wand of killing guys we don't like. Hey, hey, hey. Come back. And then, yeah, boom. That's right. Joe Hills, glad to meet you. Okay, so, in a fit of generosity, completely out of character, the mod maker has allowed us to just take this arcane boar base without making a million things in the infusion altar. So, that's pretty cool. So now at this point, what we want to do is we've got our kind of nearly broken wand of excavation. That's fine. I'm going to pick up, pick up at home and uh, sleep, and then we are going to set this thing up. Time skip. Since our, since our arcane boar base is going to require a lot of wonderful, wonderful, beautiful vis that we don't want to waste, we are going to light up a little bit of this little area here. Luckily, wastelands do not get rained on, so we can, you know, record without having to hear all that, just by moving further into the wasteland here. We're also going to add a little bit of light around here so mobs don't spawn all willy-nilly while we are trying to go about our business of creating the best new mining corporation powered by magic on the Work and Draft server. Yes, sir. you got to be proud of your work. Got to be darn proud. Okay, so the way I understand it, i got to mount this on something. So let's go ahead and build a mountain thing here. Now there's our nozzle. So, and the nozzle has to face an inventory which might also have to be on something. So, that now faces that. Now, the bore itself, we're going to place... Oh, do I have to actually dig underneath it to get down there? Do I have to attach that? There we go. Oh. I do not want to get shot by that thing. Okay, so we're going to put an efficiency 4 sapphire pickaxe in there, for speed plus 4. And we are going to add a Wand of Excavation with Treasure 2 and Fortune 2. I guess that's what that does. Okay. How, do, how does this turn on? I should have probably checked the book. What am I forgetting? So, now that we know that, we are going to remove this block. And actually, I could probably just have a switch. Probably don't want to stand underneath here. So we're going to check this box. Okay, so stuff is just dumping into the box here. That's pretty neat. And let's check... Can I see the... Okay, so the wand is going to run out soon. It's getting used pretty quick. I'm probably going to go ahead and... Oh, I should have made another book that takes me back out here. This is really neat. I kind of think... Can I put a glass pane here or will it, like, come back up and break it? 
I don't want to get hit by like a mob, like a creeper or something while I'm just watching this, but this is pretty neat. So I probably want to go break my, uh, or go make another wand of excavation. Um, so that way I can leave this thing running a little longer. But this is a pretty quick and effective way to move this, or to, to make this happen. And I could move this thing pretty easily myself, or possibly set it up on a framework, like the wonderful type of thing that I could make using Red Power 2. Yeah, Red Power 2 framework for this thing would be pretty awesome. And this is, I think, a lot faster than the Red Power uh, digging machine thing. I'm not an expert on that, though, so I couldn't say for sure, but this is pretty impressive. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and grab another wand of earth. Time skip. I'm very, very thrilled with the excellent Latin job I did here. Just look at this. It's wonderful. It's, it's perfect. This is, nobody could want better than this. No mobs will ever assault me, except from this side over here, where it's all dark. Wonderful. Let's maybe do something about that as well. Because, yeah, wow, this is super hazardous. Inconveniently unlit. Terrifyingly dark. Probably should have used a better word for dark there. Like, terrifyingly unilluminated. What a horrifying sight. A vast open field of possibilities. Monsters pressing themselves into our reality. Okay, whatever. Let's go to this thing. Take this one out. If we put the Thaumium one in there, it gets Silk Touch, but it, I don't think the Repair or the Unbreaking are going to count. That gives us a speed boost. So let's put our Treasure Wand back in there. Oh, and it's just running because, oh yeah, I left the light, or the Redstone thing on. So this thing is draining Vs pretty quickly, but like, it's not going to, you know, burn it out, hopefully. Oh! This is a case, this is why we have that Vs capacitor thing. Because now I'll be able to use that to offset massive amounts of energy that I waste using this drill. That's pretty cool. Amber dull shards. Oh, that's good too, because any sort of magical thing, like with dull shards or whatever, having the fortune pick will give me bonuses. So it's not just diamonds, it'll be redstone and other stuff too. Now, if I put in Silk Touch, can I get Silk Touch and Fortune? I think maybe. So let's go ahead and trade this out. Oh, it does give me Silk Touch. Yeah, well, I guess I knew that, though. So now my speed has dropped a little bit. But that just still looks really cool. I'm pretty happy with how this uh, goes through here. So we'll just empty out some of these blocks that, you know, we don't really care if it has room for. Making sure it has room to pick up the cool stuff. Okay, now I'm getting stone from Silk Touch. Oh! I wonder if it's gonna Silk Touch Redstone, or if it's gonna Fortune it. Same thing for the, um, for the diamonds. I guess either way, I'd get what I wanted at the end, because I could, you know, run that through. wonder how deep this is. Uh, my jetpack's pretty decent. We're gonna just hop down here real quick. Wow, this is, uh, pretty deep. We are already down at so it's kind of widening it as it goes, but like the central shaft here is these two kind of equal sign looking things. This turns down to level 13. That's fairly impressive for something that hasn't been running for very long. I'm quite fond of this machine. This mechanism is indeed a beautiful sight that will make a great addition to my technology. I would love to be able to make more stuff quicker in game, and this is going to let me do it. You know, and only costing a few earth shards and a pick every now and again is not terrible. So, anyway, I'm going to let this run. But this is just so cool. Okay, well, it's, it's using the silk touch on the uranium. But I don't know if you can get the Vs shards with silk touch anyway. So maybe that's a, a different thing. Oh, I love how cool it is. This is definitely the coolest looking of the quarries that I've seen that you can make in... Wonderful, fantastic Feed the Beast. I'm so excited about meeting the Feed the Beast team, too, when I get to PAX East, so definitely keep an eye out for me there, guys. That will be a blast. Oh, sidebar, the Repair enchantment actually does work on this. I will now try to enchant a few wands with some extra stuff to see if I can excavate with different... Ooh, Treasure 2, Frugal 3, and Potency 2. I don't know if I'm going to beat that wand... 
That is going to be pretty good. I want to see if I can change the width of the beam using the potency ability. Because currently the beam defaults to 5. Now, I know for sure that the repair thing does actually work, at least on the pick. So, if I could get a really awesome self-repairing pick and a really awesome self-repairing uh, wand, I would really have a kit that I could just use indefinitely. So we're going to take that treasure 2 one out. Currently width is 5, speed is plus 0. So we now get fortune 2, width of 9, speed of 0. So that extra width is going to be super helpful, and I'm eventually going to have to build some sort of real platform here. But let's just hop on down to the bottom, and hopefully we won't regret that decision. Okay, it looks like we have cut through some nickelite and some diamonds, ooh, maybe. So why don't we go and find out if it did silk touch or uh, special... Okay, so it did silk touch the diamonds, the amber. That's good to know. So I can just fortune three the uh, diamonds, or fortune four, maybe. Do, does that go up to four? I'll find out. But look, see, it gets my redstone ore, so I can feed that into a pulverizer, get the maximum amount of dust. This is a pretty awesome machine, and I look forward to using it a lot in the future. Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.